If you're in the market for a compact luxury crossover, these are arguably two of the best options. The Genesis GV70 is yet another home run from a brand that hasn't missed a pitch of late, while the Lexus NX has completely revised technology that finally brings it up to modern standards. Now the NX and the GV70 we have here today are nearly identical in terms of horsepower, pricing, and available options. And now, it's time to pick a winner. Or maybe I should say, it's time for battle! <laughs> okay, I know you like comparison tests, but let's just get in the car. Let's do it. It's never a bad thing starting off a video talking about design when you're standing in front of a Genesis. The GV70 is definitely a little more avant-garde and risk-taking than the more traditional G80 and GV80, but that's definitely not a bad thing as this looks fantastic. And it wears the family face so well. We cool. love the double lines motif and the headlights, cool. this huge shield grill and this kind of nice bright work that goes on it. Cool. And for me, honorable mention to the character lines that shoot out from both sides of the logo. But again, it just kind of takes a few more risks, like these weird fangs on the leading edge of the hood. The hood itself devolves into this great character line that goes all the way to the end of the car before plunging over the rear wheel. Right, right. It just looks planted and muscular. The design takes some risks. Speaking of, this car is purple. They like to call it Barossa Burgundy, but whatever you call it, it looks great. And we're, I'm just really glad that they aren't doing black and silver and white like every other luxury every automaker. Every other crossover on the planet, this right? This actually kind of stands out and the color looks wonderful in the sunlight like this. Speaking of stand out, the, the rear end of it is distinctive from the rest of the Genesis lineup too. Still with the double line motif uh, with the, the tail lights, but I like the, the work down below too where they have the crisscross pattern to match the grill. Yeah, and then they kind of have those unusual vertical exhaust yeah. outlets. And instead of kind of an upright, you know, squared off crossover body line, it has a nice fast back roof line that just kind of makes it look a little more special and interesting. Let's talk about the new Lexus NX. Or is it new? Because I swear from the front, this looks just like the old NX. It definitely has a lot of that same style with this big spindle grill and these narrow headlights, but at the same time, they have cleaned it up a little bit. You don't have the separate little Nike swoosh below the headlights anymore. And then the body sides have been decluttered a little bit as well. Back to the grill. I should point out, this is an F Sport and that does some good things for the design. It makes the grill black, you know, and kind of reduces down just how massive it is at the front. Sure thing. F Sport also does some good things to the side of the car. It brings these black 20 inch wheels and then it blacks out the mirrors and the trim that goes around the windows. Yeah, overall, it just looks a little more modern and contemporary. People really like blackout packages and, and this definitely obliges. Modern is probably the right word and that also applies to the rear of the car. To Lexus's credit, that does look drastically different from the old NX. They've made a huge change on the rear of the car, starting with the full width taillight panel. And then of course, we have a spelled out word mark on the rear hatch. I don't love it. I wish it had a badge. I don't know how you feel. Nobody can build a car anymore without spelling out what it is across the back of it. But you know, it's with the times. It's safe to say if you want a more traditional looking crossover, this is the safer bet. That said, the Genesis turns more heads on the road. Yeah, for sure. I had people all weekend just asking me what that car was that I was driving around in and people just wanted to know more about it. And I think that probably is one of the reasons that we give the Genesis the overall nod in terms of exterior design. It's time to talk about the interiors. Yeah, um, and because we're behind the wheel of this Lexus, let's start with it. So Lexus completely revamped the NX's interior when they redesigned it for 2022. It is completely different. They've replaced the monolithic center stack with something that's a little more flowing and graceful. And I really think they've done a great job. Lexus has never had a problem with material quality or the way things look. This material that's all over is New Lux, is that what they call it? Yeah, yeah, New Lux is their synthetic leather alternative, and they're really kind of imbuing this uh, sustainability kind of ethos into all of their products. You can get an NX with leather, but actually most of the higher trims come with New Lux only. It feels like the real stuff, if not a little nicer. The fatal flaw, shall we say, of the NX, and this is weird for a Lexus, the seats. The dang seats and their over bolstered sides. Yeah, I mean, we've only been sitting in this car for a couple of minutes and I already feel pressure points forming on either side of my hips. And I don't think that that's something that you really want in a compact luxury crossover. 
it, it's strange and it seems like a misstep for the people that are going to buy this car if there's one way to caveat it it's that the the extra bolsters here are attached to the f-sport so if you do go for a non-f-sport trim the seats are going to be different absolutely and that's probably the move in this case honestly moving on to the genesis or as i call her jenny from the block <laughs> Okay, so Genesis is on a roll recently and the GB70 is no exception. Their interiors are fantastic. As nice as this one is with soft touch on the dashboard and door panels and everything like that, the Genesis is even better. It has soft touch everywhere, including down low where you're never going to actually like rest your hands. So that's pretty cool. While you can get very beautiful carbon fiber trim yes. on the Genesis GB70, ours has... Not that, it has the furthest thing from that. It has a strange, red line which looks like I gave your niece or nephew a red crayon and just said go for it. It also looks a little tiny bit like my stock portfolio over the last just 12 months down. just up and down. Just my really... current emotional state. Yeah exactly <laughs> lots of heart attacks going on in that interior. And it lights up at night like they're trying to draw attention to it. It's strange to me but you know with the Genesis you can get a million different color options on the inside you don't have to go for the red line over beige situation. Exactly and when you do kind of show a little bit of restraint in that respect the Genesis is incredible again i already talked about all those great materials that they use on the on the door panels and seats the seats themselves are very comfortable they're wider they're not quite as yep. cosseting as these are but when you're just driving down the interstate they're really pretty impressive ride quality is a bit better in the gv70 and yeah. this is something to take into consideration noises coming from the outside world inside of the car the genesis does a better job of maintaining them yeah, it's really tight, but I think in this category, we probably would end up giving the nod to the Genesis, yeah? All that means Genesis, one tick in the W column. Yep. Onward to technology, which is something that's more important than just about anything else in this category of car. Um, and I'm glad we're driving the Lexus right now because we have to tip our metaphorical caps to Lexus. They have done the tech from the ground up redo yep. in the NX. We don't need to make you wait for the answer on this one. The Lexus absolutely takes this category thanks to a wonderful 14 inch touchscreen display right where you want it. It's like screens are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And yes, this is an enormous screen, don't get me wrong. But the usability, the UX design is just really straightforward and easy. I love that the climate panel is there all the time. Even as I'm going around a curve, I can quickly find what I need, whether it's a heated seat or the temperature control. And then this row of apps on the left-hand side, there's no home button, which does kind sure. of bother us. Sure. But you can get between navigation and your music, just all super easy. And a big one here, this has wireless CarPlay integration and Android Auto. So you just take your phone, throw it down on the wireless charger and go from there. That alone might be enough to make someone pick the Lexus over the GV70 because that vehicle requires a wired smartphone connection and there aren't even any USB-C inputs. So it's already maybe one or two years behind the curve Isn't that strange? in terms of modern technology. If you go out and buy a brand new iPhone, the cord that comes in the box, you can't plug into the car to get CarPlay. I don't yeah. understand that. It's really unfortunate. There's no huge swipe we can take at the Genesis. The tech suite is nice to work with. There's a big, 14.5 inch display. Uh, you can use it as a touchscreen, but they give you the little scrolly controller. The only downfall there is that it's the exact same size as the gear selector and right, right next to it. So you don't want to mistake one for the other. The Genesis is nice to work with, but honestly, the Lexus is just a better situation to interact with. Substantially, no, no denial here. One of the areas where these vehicles compete very well with one another is safety. They both are really similarly equipped in terms of the kind of driver assistance and active safety features you get. The truth is that this category is a draw and it's a draw yeah. because you can't go wrong with either. Both are extremely safe vehicles. They're two of the highest rated, safest vehicles you can buy on the road. And yeah. that's a good thing. So if you're buying this car for a family, know that you're in good hands either way. The Absolutely. difference is in using them as a driver. We would mm -hmm. both agree, that especially when we're on the highway, using all the driving assistance features, the Genesis is just a little bit more user-friendly. Yeah, it really only requires two buttons. You've got your active cruise control set button and then your highway driving assist 
button right there and there you are everything's active and ready to, to step in if you need some assistance or if you're not paying close enough attention to the road the lexus requires just a couple more button presses yeah. but then again once everything's all active they both work very well here we are we're centered in the lane we're doing pretty good and it kind of just works the lexus is similar just we're getting down to nitpicking details honestly. between the two but user friendliness there's a slight nod to the genesis though again this category is a draw because they're both so similarly equipped and both very safe vehicles All right, let's talk about performance. And for that, let's get into the Genesis because this is arguably probably the more athletic vehicle in our pairing. Not by much because we're in the non-athletic version of this car for sure. The, the short answer is if you want a sporty GV70, you got to upgrade to the 3.5 engine in that car. Absolutely. This is more of a balanced drive. It's not quite as overpowerful and definitely not quite as athletic, but at the same time, it's still a rear drive bias platform shared with the G70 sedan, which is one of the best sports sedans on the market as well. So you still get a little bit of athleticism and dynamism in the, in the way that it drives. Dynamism. It's a 2.5 turbo four cylinder and you get 300 horsepower. Show us what that feels like. Here we go. One thing that the Genesis could probably use some work on in the powertrain department is the eight-speed automatic transmission. It's not terrible in this application, but you can still kind of catch it with its pants down if you're emerging on a freeway or making a two-lane two -lane highway passing maneuver or something like that. You kind of feel like, oh, shoot, you wanted third gear when it gave you fourth right. or fifth, and it just kind of doesn't really want to downshift. But considering that this is the the, the non-performance version sure. of this car. In 99% of scenarios, it's uh, a lot quieter of an engine. The Lexus is pretty buzzy once you get up and moving. Yeah, and it's not a small four-cylinder either. 2.5 liters yeah. is kind of on the larger side for, for four-cylinder engines, and they've still done a good job of kind of quieting the racket down and making sure you don't get any harshness or buzziness coming into the cabin. The Lexus, the one we have, comes with a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder. There you have 275 horsepower. You know, incremental horsepower difference. Genesis beats it just slightly. But you do feel that out on the road. You do. I, I don't know agree. if it's I don't know if it's uh, transmission tuning or what, but the Genesis feels a little more eager to move forward when you need to put your foot down than the Lexus does. Lexus is also an eight speed transmission. In that F Sport, they say that the tuning is slightly different from the standard NX350. Yeah, it feels a little more athletic and a little more exciting to drive on a road like this. The chassis is a little more composed, kind of goes over bumps and just thwumps once and then that's it. So it does feel a little more connected to the road, which is definitely a good thing. Really incremental differences between the two though, quite frankly. But if you want one that performs better, you have our endorsement to go buy the GV70 Sport. And that brings us to our final category of the day, value for the money. And this is taking into account the price you pay, the features you get, and fuel economy after you own the vehicle. That's an important one when you're considering a vehicle like this. Genesis GV70 with the four cylinder starts at 41,000. Mm -hmm. uh, this one has two option packages, both of which we like. We actually like this car as it is spec'd. Um, this one out the door is right about fifty thousand dollars, fifty thousand six hundred or so. Um, with those upgrades, you're getting things like a better sound system. You're getting some nicer trim features on the inside of the panoramic car. roof. Panoramic those fantastic 19-inch wheels that we love that also give it a very comfortable ride. So across the board, fifty thousand dollars for this car is a very strong value. The Lexus, on the other hand, the F Sport starts at forty-six thousand dollars or so, and a similarly equipped one uh, to our test car is also just over fifty thousand dollars. You definitely get a lot for your money in both of these vehicles. It's really a very difficult question of which one is the better value in terms of features. I'm leaning maybe a little bit more toward the Genesis on that front, but then again, we need to take into account the Lexus gets slightly better fuel economy, 20, I think it's 25 miles per gallon combined versus 24. So you're gonna save a little money there. Incremental differences. And then as well, you can also get a cheaper Lexus NX if you don't need the turbo engine or you don't need F-Sport. The Lexus NX starts at well under $40,000 giving it a much more compelling value proposition to someone who doesn't care about performance relative to this car. However, the Genesis comes standard with all wheel drive. It's an option on the Lexus. That's absolutely true. So 
the Lexus NX you can get out the door cheaper than a GV70, that is true. But these cars, as equipped, the better value taking everything into consideration is the Genesis GV70. So where does that leave us? Well, if you look at the score sheet, the Lexus has really only won one or two categories, but that doesn't reflect how close this competition actually was. The reality is the GV70 just edges the Lexus out by a little tiny bit in every category that it wins, and that probably makes it our overall winner. Yeah, on paper, they are as about as identical as you can get, but in reality and experiencing these cars for just over a week, the Genesis is the better product and it makes it the winner of this comparison test. Absolutely. As always, Brett has written an incredible story uh, for this comparison test. If you want to check that out, head to the link in the description and please give us a follow on social media using the handle at Motor1.com. Thanks for watching.